Ja, hallo, herzlich willkommen alle zusammen. Ich bin heute in London und schaue mir Gears of War 4 an. Und zwar vor dieser wunderschönen Kulisse hier in einer alten Lagerhalle. Und ich habe auch gleich einen Interviewgast hier neben mir. Hello, good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Um, please, for our viewers, first introduce yourself and what's your job here at Gears of War 4. Okay, uh, I'm Rod Ferguson and I'm the studio head for the coalition making Gears of War 4. Uh, and we're in Vancouver, Canada. Okay, cool. Um, you're saying that Gears of War 4 is actually going back to Gears of War 3, to its gameplay foundations. Right. What does it mean? Well, it just means we're going to use Gears of War 3 as sort of our baseline of where we're starting as a starting point, and then we're building on top of that. And okay. so all the new advances we're doing, like close cover combat, the way that we're doing co-op, the way that we do cover mechanics, all those things are sort of start with that idea of like what was working so well in Gears 3, and then we're building on top of it. Okay. What are the, the key aspects when try, maybe also trying to modernize the gameplay of Gears of War 3? Because since Gears of War 3, obviously there are a lot of games and players have like different expectations now. Yeah, I mean, I think the bigger thing for us is not so much, I think the mechanics are still, you know, solid uh, and that we're trying to like, the way that you see the evolution of cover from Gears 1 to 2 to 3 is the same sort of thing we're trying to do from 3 to 4. And that's why you see things like close cover combat as a sort of an evolution of the cover mechanics. But I also think it's more about sort of the story and the tone. You know, and, and I think, you know, back in 2006, I think it was okay to have black and white characters, that idea of like sort of, whereas now I think people are looking for more nuance and more sort of gray in their stories where not everything okay. is so easily known. And so that's what I really like about our, our three main characters with JD, Kate, and Dell is that they're young and so they haven't they're, they haven't been completely set in stone yet. And so we have a place to go with them and a place to go discover and a place to learn who these people are. Okay. How about the, the basic reactions on your new characters? Because I heard some guys were like, okay, they don't really fit in the Gears universe. They're too, maybe even too young, too hip and not that like battle battle-proofed guys like <laughs> right. before, you know? Well, I think that's, I mean, they're coming off of 25 years of peace and that the neither of the three of them have ever fought a locust before or fought a monster before. So that's the big part of that. That's the discovery with these characters. We wanted characters that feel a little different and that, you know, the, the game starts with the characters being part of the outsiders, not part of the coalition. So you get to learn about these characters and go through that. And I think, you know, the fact of whether they look, you know, Gears has a stylized look. And we're trying to walk this line of keeping the style of Gears of War, but making the sort of the proportions and stuff feel a little bit more believable. But we didn't want to go completely realistic yeah. um, because it didn't feel like Gears anymore. But you know, and, and we didn't want to go all the way that we were in the previous game. So we're trying to walk this line between sort of a, you know, we like we call it sort of going to heroic authenticity is <laughs> is the words we use for our direction. Is this notion of having. This idea is authentic yeah. and it feels believable, but yet has an heroic element to it, like the stylized a little bit over the top. Okay. Um, you also um, kind of changed some of the cover mechanics, so it's like very uh, much more dynamic. So you have um, special actions like grabbing over the cover and grab your opponent. Um, would you say that these actions are more for the multiplayer or single player, or what, in which kind of play mode is it more useful? Oh, I think they're useful in both. I mean, the thing when we design the mechanics, like the yank, as you're calling it, or the vault, those are those are moves that were tested and designed from the very beginning to work in both. Yeah. Um, so I find it a little bit easier to do them in, in campaign because uh, you can play to the fighting the monsters and be able to use it more. But uh, it's a it's a kind of a a little bit harder move in multiplayer because people are so mobile and using shotguns. It's a little bit harder to pull off, but. We've designed it from the very beginning to work in multiplayer, and so, uh, and it's one of the things we've really focused on is the balance of uh, do these moves actually work and not become overpowered or are be or are not useful enough. And we've, I think we've walked that fine line, and it's working really well. Okay, and what I realized when playing the game was that you aren't able to yank your opponent while being in standing cover. Was it only right. my impression? Or no, it's yanking them over low cover. Yeah, yeah. when you're in standing you, you cover, yanking them over. Oh, you want to yank them around? Around, and then yeah. maybe stab them afterwards? There you go, Gears 5, we're good. <laughs> Gears 5, you just, there you go, that's the future. <laughs> okay, um, let's then just sum up a little bit about um, this whole card um, upgrade, crate yeah. system you got, you got in the game. It feels like nowadays every shooter has a, a card system in it. <laughs> What's up with that? Uh, it's, it's a simple t way for, I think, players to understand kind of what you're doing and in the sense that everybody gets, you know, whether it be Pokemon or Magic the Gathering, 
or nowadays Hearthstone, like I think people understand the mechanic of a card or a pack of cards. And so when we looked at, you know, when you look at Gears 3 and how successful that was with weapon skins and character skins, we're just like, how do we come up with a, a metaphor where this stuff can make sense in terms of it's growing a collection of something? Yeah. Like you're collecting weapon skins, you're collecting character skins, and the cards felt really, made a lot of sense for that to work that way. And I think, and. And it helped a little that we were all playing Hearthstone two years ago when we started the design of the game. <laughs> so like, oh, this seems like a really way to, natural way to do this. Um, yeah, and so it just, it, I, I think because of that simplicity that people understand collecting and, the, and, and much like because of the collectible card games, I think people understand cards and collecting, that I think it's just an easy way for to communicate that with players. Okay. Um, I have to come back to the cover system once again because sure. I always feel like this is the core feature of the core basic feature of the, of the, of the game. Um, Will you be able to perform other cover special moves, unlike uh, yanking and um, uh, vaulting. Uh, vaulting? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we we dabble with some stuff, but I, I don't know that there was going to be like really big other moves. I mean, one of the things we're really focused on is is you know making it smoother to get into cover, yeah. in and out of cover, and to just make it easier to do. And, and like I said, we try to mature that feature from the way we did from one to three. We're trying to do that from three to four. Uh, and so that's something that we're just really, obviously a, a lot of our time has been focused on. And the fact that we switched engines from Unreal Engine 3 to Engine, engine 4, we had to recreate that system in the yeah. new engine. And so we focused a lot on parity, what we call parity, which is that idea of like, okay, first we have to get to a place where it feels as good as 3, yeah. and then we can innovate on top of it. And that's taken a long time. And so I'm really, like I said, what I hope when you finish playing today, that you go like, wow, that really felt like Gears of War, because <laughs> that's what we're going after. Okay. You also mentioned that you actually had to rebuild the whole AI system for the game and you also implemented like even more intelligent bots into the game. Um, so what was the challenge on the AI and especially when bringing um, co-op versus mode to life? Yeah, it's, it's super challenging to go from, I mean, we had some structures in place obviously to look at from Gears 3, uh, but to have to rewrite all of our AI. And one of the things that's actually really challenging, we, I was surprised by, like when they rewrote our AI, at one point our AI was too smart. And, and you can actually, there is such a thing as an AI that's too smart, that if you, every time you throw a grenade and they get out of the way, and every time you go to <laughs> flank they run and hide, okay. then you realize you don't have these opportunities to actually impact them or, or be effective against them. And so it was finding this balance between uh, you want an intelligent AI that feels challenging and, and that you can play against, but if they're too smart then it's actually not fun. So that was a big part, but then for multiplayer specifically we were focused on Hey, when these when you play as a team in multiplayer, you generally have roles that people are there are support roles and there are aggression roles and there are people who sort of hang back and and so that was something that they were able to do is in, in sort of the revamping of our AI, they were actually able to put personalities onto them. So it's not okay. like one bot plays the same <clears throat> as the rest of his team. Yeah. They now the, of the five of them, they all have different roles and the personalities and they play differently. Okay. Do they do they learn the behavior of the players when they when they continue playing? No, it's not a, like a system that says, "Oh, I know he likes to do this, so yeah. I'll go and learn that." No, but it, what's nice is that we do have a difficulty system. So, you know, when people go in to play co-op versus where they can party up into a team of five humans against bots, they can say, "Let's try casual." Oh, we really we we dominated them. Let's go to normal or hardcore or insane, and you can sort of increase the the difficulty of the bots as you play to find your level of challenge. Uh, nowadays. There are less and less games that have actually a split-screen campaign, uh -huh. and Gears of War for me always was a game I would wanted to play in split-screen. Sure. So is it in it? Yeah, absolutely. Every mode that ships in Gears of War 4, uh, multiplayer or a campaign, will has split-screen. So uh, that's part of you know as we say like co-op is cake, not icing. It's like it's <laughs> co-op is part of our DNA. It's what what really kind of defines Gears of War. And so we feel like couch co-op is, is fundamental to our game and we wouldn't ship one uh, a Gears game without it. Uh, why do so few games um, uh, use split screen nowadays? Is it because of the hardware? Is it just because it's hard to implement? Just because everyone's playing online or what is it? I, I think it's just challenge. Like it was back, if you go back to like 2006 when we brought out Gears of War 1, At that time, we, that, where we came up with the phrase co-op is cake, not icing, is yeah. that at, in that time, in 2006, everybody was announcing co-op, and then as you would go through the difficulties of shipping, they'd cut it. And so yeah. it kept falling away, falling away. And that was one of the things we said very early on, is you can never cut co-op. <laughs> and it's really hard like the, to replicate the game over the network between two players and the state of the world, it's not easy to do. And yeah. a, lot, a lot of work went into that. And I think that's what you're seeing probably today with split screen. And there's, there's a technolo technological challenge around 
how do you deal with you now you've got subtitles for two different characters speaking from two different screens and you're you're rendering two different windows and so are you willing to drop the frame rate like for us even like in multiplayer you play in 60 frames per second but in split screen you're going to play in 30 because we're rendering two windows not one so there's a lot of effort that has to go into it and so either you're either you're committed to it and it's part of what you're doing from the beginning or it becomes one of those things where you end up potentially having to cut just because it doesn't make sense from a technology standpoint. And the whole game will be in 1080p? Yes, the whole game will be in 1080p and it'll be 30 frames per second in uh, single player and it'll be 60 frames per second in multiplayer. All right, thank you for your time. I guess you already heard maybe what a kind of fun we guys all had their heads right. with the game. So I'm looking, really looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm <laughs> glad you had fun. Absolutely, thank you.